These dark patches on Greenland's ice sheet aren't just any old stains. Every summer, the ice, which is usually bright white, turns murky gray in certain areas. This so-called dark zone was a huge mystery for a long time, until some studies discovered that this weird transformation was connected to the odd appearance of red, green, and brown-colored algae. The scariest part is that this algae bloom keeps growing. The dark zone is getting darker, and terrifying microbes might start appearing. Now, the rest of the world should be concerned. The Greenland ice sheet is like a massive ice blanket that covers around 80% of the island. It's so thick that it holds about 8% of the world's freshwater ice. For most of the year, the ice looks like a giant untouched white sheet stretching over the land. But when summer rolls around and temperatures start to rise, things begin to change. The ice melts, revealing rocky areas along the coast. And as you move further inland, that once smooth white ice becomes darker. This is the dark zone, and it covers an area of around 248 miles in length and 62 miles at its widest point. This weird phenomenon happens basically for two reasons. The first one is black carbon. Just like dust that builds up on your bookshelf, the ice in Greenland has the same issue. The wind carries a mix of dust and soot to this icy area. But unlike your bookshelf, you can't just wipe it off with a cloth. In Greenland's case, this dirty mix settles on the ice and sticks around for thousands of years. So, the dark zone is basically covered in a fine layer of dust that's built up over time. Back in 2014, researchers analyzed this dirty mix and found that the darker ice areas were filled with black carbon. This black carbon didn't just appear out of thin air. Well, actually, it sort of did. Scientists believe it mostly comes from smoke produced by wildfires in northern Canada and Alaska somewhere in the past. As you might guess, black carbon is black, which is why it makes the ice look darker. Now, the second big reason for the Greenland Ice Sheet's summer makeover has to do with those algae we mentioned earlier. We're mostly talking about two types of it, the Ancelonema alaskana and the Ancelonema nordenskjoldii. Both of them love cold water regions. During winter, they stay in a dormant state deep within the ice. But when spring comes, they start to slowly migrate to the surface. By the time summer hits, they're ready to bloom and soak up nearly 24 hours of sunlight each day for photosynthesis and growth. Normally, these algae are green, but when exposed to sunlight, they turn brown as a natural way to protect themselves from harmful ultraviolet rays. And this color change is also what makes the ice in Greenland look darker. So far, this has been normal behavior. What's really alarming is that these algae blooms are getting bigger and bigger every year. This happens because they thrive on phosphorus, a nutrient that's plentiful out there and comes from a mineral called hydroxylapatite. This mineral is found in a type of rock that breaks down into tiny dust particles, which are then blown across the ice by the wind. As the climate gets warmer, the rocks dry out more, and stronger winds carry more dust. More dust means more phosphorus, leading to more algae growth. See? It is a cycle, and it keeps getting worse every year. Studying this is crucial to understanding why the dark zone keeps getting bigger. From the year 2000 to 2012, its size increased by 12%. But you might be wondering, why should we care? After all, it's just ice getting darker, right? Well, not exactly. Think about how you can't stand wearing black clothes on a hot sunny day. They soak up the heat and make you feel even hotter. That's because darker surfaces absorb more sunlight. The same thing happens to ice. Together. Dust, black carbon, and algae blooms are responsible for about 70% of the variability in albedo on the Greenland ice sheet. Albedo is just a fancy word for how reflective a surface is. If you take two surfaces, one white and shiny, and the other dark and rough, the white one will reflect a lot of light and heat, giving it a high albedo. The dark one, on the other hand, will absorb more light and heat, so it has a low albedo. 
During the summer, the Greenland ice sheet experiences a reduction in albedo. This means the ice absorbs more sunlight, and when ice absorbs more sunlight, it melts faster than it should. This is why understanding what's happening in the dark zone is so important. It helps predict how quickly the Greenland ice sheet is melting and how it can affect the rest of the world. Greenland's ice sheet is the second largest in the world, covering an area about the size of all the land in the United States east of the Mississippi River. And its huge mass of ice averages a thickness of 1.4 miles. Unfortunately, the ice loss has skyrocketed. Back in the 1990s, Greenland was losing about 25 billion tons of ice per year. Now, it's losing around 234 billion tons per year. That's nearly 10 times more ice melting away each year. According to NASA, if all of Greenland's ice sheet were to melt, it would increase global sea levels by about 24 feet. That could be catastrophic for coastal countries and cities around the world. The Netherlands could be submerged, the Bahamas could be almost completely wiped out, and many of the Philippines islands would be at risk of disappearing. All of this may seem like a distant reality, and it is true that most scientists believe it would take several hundred or even thousands of years for the ice sheet to melt completely. But it is important to know that Greenland didn't always have this thick layer of ice. Very recently, researchers took a close look at some sediment from the bottom of a two-mile-deep ice core extracted from the center of Greenland. They found that the soil had traces of willow wood, insect parts, fungi, and even poppy seeds. So these fossils are the first direct evidence that Greenland's ice sheet melted away in the recent geological past, around 400,000 years ago. At that time, Greenland was home to a green tundra landscape with insects and plants. This discovery is both fascinating and scary, because it shows that the ice sheet collapsed before and might be more fragile than scientists originally thought. There is another concern, too. A recent research collected meltwater from different spots on the Greenland ice sheet and found that the water samples were packed with hundreds and thousands of microbes. The concern is that they could be released into the ocean in the future. And some studies already suggest that areas near where a lot of glacial meltwater flows have a higher risk of viruses jumping to new hosts, like from animals to humans. Even though experts believe the chance of a doomsday virus coming from the glaciers is very small, it's still not zero. The truth is, we don't know much about the thousands of microbial species living on the surface of the ice, and there is simply not enough data to fully understand how dangerous these organisms might be. All of this might sound concerning, but we shouldn't panic just yet. There's still a lot we don't understand about what is darkening the Greenland ice sheet. We still need more detailed measurements of the relative abundance of dust, algae, and black carbon, as well as a better understanding of how these potentially dangerous microbes could affect our lives. The more we learn, the better we can predict what's going to happen and how we can prepare for it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.